Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan. I can't remember when I first heard the term autogynophilia. I've only been seriously interested in transgenderism for about four and a half years now. And it was sometime during the first year that I came across Ray Blanchard and his typology of transidentifying men, which I expect most viewers of this video will already know at least something about, but I'll summarize it anyway. The term autogynophilia was coined by Blanchard, who is a psychologist and who worked for many years as a sex researcher in Toronto. He uses the word to refer to an observed phenomenon of a man being sexually aroused by the thought of himself as female. It seems he wasn't the first to observe it, as many people seem to think. Some credit must go to a German physician and sexologist called Magus Hirschfeld, who published about it in 1918, calling it automonosexualism. What inspired this video was a question from a transgender correspondent of mine. I had said Reasons that people transition are not the same in every case. Most male transitioners are autogynophiles, for example. No females are. That is why we see many older men transitioning and very few women. Now, by that, I meant very few older women. I regret I didn't make that clearer, but it's pretty well known nowadays that the majority of young people seeking medical transition are female. I haven't been able to find any clear data on older women transitioning and would be grateful if anyone can supply any. By older, I mean middle-aged and older, not 30 or 35. Okay, that may be older than the average age of transitioning, but it's still young. There are very few anecdotes recorded of middle-aged and older women transitioning compared to men in the same age groups. Anyway, my correspondent responded with this question. Could you cite any studies or other forms of evidence to prove your claim that many trans women are autogynophilic? My source is Blanchard himself. In an article published on Fourth Wave Now website four years ago, he said, in Western countries in recent years, including the United States, autogynophilia has accounted for at least 75% of cases of male to female transsexualism. Blanchard says there are two basic types of transidentifying males. One group comprises very feminine homosexual males who typically seek to transition while very young. The other group are the ones he calls autogynophiles, commonly abbreviated to AGP, which stands for both autogynophiles and autogynophilia. This group, the non uh, homosexual males includes men who are heterosexual, bisexual and asexual. And if you don't believe asexual men exist, I'll show you one in a minute. One observation that Blanchard uh, made and one that I can't help making myself is how very different are many of those men in the non-homosexual group married to women, having fathered children and often transitioning in middle age or older, how different they are from the gay men who were the very feminine little boys who liked girly stuff and who transition while young, often as a result of their environment and cultural pressures, in other words, homophobia, which may be internalized. So many of the AGP group are so mannish. I mean, think Caitlyn Jenner, decathlete, married three times to women, fathered six children. Think of the soldiers, or former soldiers like Jennifer Pritzker, police officers, firefighters. He was nominated for Woman of the Year, even prison officers. I mean, here is a US Navy veteran, now a corrections officer in San Quentin prison. Loads more seem to work in typically blokey, techy type jobs and behave in male typical ways, especially in their language when they get abusive to women. People like these do make the alternative model of having some metaphysical feminine essence very hard to take seriously. So this series is about bad arguments. What is the bad argument about AGP? Well, quite simply that it doesn't exist. 
it's not uncommon to see flat denial of its existence on Twitter. Oh, look at this numbskull. Any time someone mentions AGP, you just know they don't actually care about science. They're just pro whatever is anti-trans stroke harmful to trans communities. This is so typical of the cult playbook, invoking the name of science in a completely meaningless way and as if they know anything about it and the victim playing. Of course, it's not the impact you are having on women's lives. You don't even want to know about that. It's just because we don't like you. Did arms. So over all that. But it is interesting that this individual perceives the concept of AGP as harmful to trans people. That was certainly not Blanchard's intention. He arrived at his typology after considering the historical and clinical literature and his own experience of working with hundreds of men seeking so-called sex reassignment. So I think he has quite a large degree of credibility. At the end of the day, he was just a researcher who hit on a hypothesis and investigated it, arrived at a conclusion and published it in a few specialised small publication journals and, as you may know, a couple of people picked it up and ran with it. One of them, Anne A. Lawrence, who is a medic turned sexologist, is a trans-identifying male and a self-confessed autogynophile. I've got a page on autogynophilia on my website, of course, and I quote from a paper by Anne A. Lawrence in the introduction. Nearly 3% of men in Western countries may experience autogynophilia. Its most severe manifestation, male to female transsexualism, is rare but increasing in prevalence. The other person who promoted Blanchard's typology was psychology professor J. Michael Bailey, who in 2003 published his book, The Man Who Would Be Queen, The Science of Gender Bending and Transsexualism. So to deny that AGP exists is just silly. There are loads of men who are transidentifying and loads who aren't, who are all quite open about the fact that they are AGP. One of my favourite autogynophiles. <laughs> Can't believe I said that, but it's true. There is a YouTuber whose account is called Crying Nancy, a young bloke in Russia who is very open about his feelings and his mental anguish. He is not attracted to men or women, so I guess he would be in Blanchard's asexual group. For as long as he can remember, the only thing he can get off on is imagining himself as a woman. He doesn't ever expect to have a relationship that is anything more than a friendship. I feel sad for him. He says his libido is no use to him and has spoken of a desire for chemical castration. He describes himself as not feminine and wishes to continue living as a man, but he seems to feel a strong repugnance at his masculine body and he has started taking cross-sex hormones in low doses in order to stop further muscularization, as he calls it. This is what I like best about him. And in general, I don't want to tell myself a woman because <clears throat> then it's like uh, I'm in delusion really and uh, feminists will hate me for that if I say, oh, I'm really a woman. So I refuse to call myself a woman. I've mentioned Grayson Perry before. In his book, he wrote, I am a transvestite. I am turned on by dressing in clothes that are heavily associated with being female. How can I, brought up as a man, know anything about the experience of being a woman? It would be insulting to women if I did. His wife, Philippa, is a psychotherapist, which probably comes in handy. She's the one in the really weird frock. And there is Lisa Shoup, another military veteran. He became famous for being the first person in the US to be legally recognised as non-binary, an episode he now regrets. Shoup is another man who is open about his autogynophilia and tried all sorts of things to repress it, including religion for a while. I used to follow him on Twitter. Nothing worked, so he has retransitioned and is chemically castrated. There is also an autogynophilia subreddit called Ask AGP, which is interesting. So enough of the denial. It won't wash. AGP is real, so why deny it? In fact, they often do more than deny it. This 
is a fairly typical comment. Describing trans women as sexual perverts is a pretty good hint that you are at the very least bigoted towards them. Transphobia, blah blah blah, right wing, blah blah turfs. Just the usual hysteria from a cultist, but you may be forgiven for thinking that the person he was responding to had actually called one or more people sexual perverts. In fact, what she said was this. So she's a lesbian and she's fallen out with the male friend who thinks she's a bigot for excluding AGP males, by which she means trans-identifying heterosexual or bisexual men, from her dating pool. Another response to the same woman which is a bit more explanatory. I find it hard to believe you don't understand the connotations calling someone an autogynophiliac male carries. You say it is a descriptive term as though words exist in a bubble. You know the history of the word and the way it is seen by most trans fam as degrading and dehumanising. So I can only assume that you choose to use those words to convey a certain sense. So we must not use this term because some men find it degrading even though it describes a well-documented phenomenon that many men admit to, and even though she wasn't naming anyone or using AGP as an insult. This is just cultists, again, trying to control other people's speech. I know there are criticisms of women especially using the term AGP as an insult and there may be some justification in that criticism seeing as people can't help their feelings but it's pretty obvious that some trans people take offence at the very word where none is intended. One more. This one was addressed to James Cantor. You may know of him. He's another sex researcher and he did a short thread on autogynophilia. I assure you, he did not either state or imply that trans-identifying men are just a bunch of perverts. It's like the word autogynophilia is a red rag to a bull. But why? In Alice Dreger's book, Galileo's Middle Finger, she argues that the reason trans activists went after J. Michael Bailey over his book, you may know that they tried to destroy him, ruin his life, his career, everything, and ended up bringing his book and AGP to a much wider attention, obviously. Alice documents it in great details in one long chapter, and according to Alice, on page 63. Oh, she points out that most of Bailey's book represented male to female transsexuality as a matter of lust. And she says, before Bailey, many trans advocates had spent a long time working to desexualize and depathologize their public representations in an effort to reduce stigma, improve access to care and establish basic human rights for trans people. The move to talking about transgender instead of transsex was motivated in part by a desire to shift public attention away from an issue of sexual orientation sexuality always being contentious, to an issue of gender. Right, I am reminded of how a couple of years ago I gave a talk to a local humanist group. My talk was entitled Transgenderism and the GRA, Gender Recognition Act, and the meeting organiser, who really didn't know anything about the subject, mistakenly advertised it as transsexualism and the GRA, and I was immediately attacked by cultists, here's one for example, for wanting to depict it as sexual, which I didn't actually. The sexual stuff and autogynophilia played no part whatsoever in my peak trans experience. I didn't even know about it. And it was only after I'd given that talk that I began to really grasp how big an issue it is. Now, earlier this week, Alice Dreger posted a short thread which started with Feels like a good day to reiterate, there's nothing wrong with being an autogynophiliac. Apart from the distress it causes some sufferers and the misery caused to the partners and children of some sufferers and those who are hurt by what some autogynophiles do and the ideology promoted by some of them, right? I understand that people can't help how they feel and I'm not going to judge people for how they feel. Obviously, what matters here is how they 
behave as a result of those feelings. And to be fair to Alice, she does make that point in a subsequent tweet. I acknowledge also that it may be very hard to resist acting on those feelings and I know that those who feel they need help in overcoming them might not find the help they like. It may not be possible to help them get over those feelings. This guy got counselling which ultimately didn't help but he has been able through his own research to help himself to resist the temptation to transition so far. This, by the way, is the most vivid description of what it feels like to be an AGP that I have read. It came from the detransition subreddit and I'll link to it below. As far as I'm concerned, it only becomes a problem if you are hurting other people or you are claiming to be what you are not and violating the dignity and sex-based rights and protections of actual women. Unfortunately, too many autogynophiles are not only making no attempt to control their feelings, they are very publicly flaunting their paraphilia and deliberately taunting and upsetting women. For example, Tyler Porter here, I'm only going to give the one example, there are plenty more out there and they make me sick, but note where he is posting that picture and tweet from. Of course not all autogynophiles are like that, but too many are, and that makes it too difficult for many women to give AGP males what Alice says they need. Being accepted is critical and it's the reason she honours everyone's gender self-identification. The problem here is that if you accept the AGP male's identity as a woman when he is actually a heterosexual man but who identifies as a lesbian, uses lesbian dating apps, hangs out in lesbian spaces, then you are violating the boundaries and rights of lesbians and indeed the rights of all women if you allow him into our spaces as he presumably craves. I'm going to give the last word to a man, sorry, but Lisa Shoup, who I mentioned earlier and who responded to those tweets by Alice with, can you honestly endorse a male being autogynophilic? The fact is far too many of us cause harm to females, in my case, to my wife also, wanting her to pretend to be a straight man for sex. And he also quote tweeted someone else saying, my ex was caught trying to breastfeed our newborn daughter in hospital with a hard on. It's all for the sexual gratification and validation of the male. And there lies the problem, which, to be honest, I don't see a solution to. I don't think most women will be okay with being around men who behave like that. And I'm not going to say any more. Thanks for watching. Bye.